Item number SCP-316 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-316 needs no special containment other than to prevent misuse by unauthorized personnel. Those operating SCP-316 should wear highly reflective full-body wear to prevent accidental exposure. Personnel privy to sensitive information should be kept out of visual range of SCP-316 due to its ability to induce a suggestive state. Description SCP-316 is a bronze-aged carbide lamp. The casing corresponds to no manufactured models and appears to be homemade. The bulb is ordinary and can be replaced without impeding the function of SCP-316. Internal circuitry of SCP-316 is constructed of an unknown metal rather than copper. The casing has a battery compartment, which takes 2D batteries. SCP-316 does not function unless 2D batteries are in the battery compartment with their positive ends facing each other. When switched on, SCP-316's bulb emits a nearly opaque beam of white light. Non-reflective objects and materials in contact with this light have their molecular structure rearranged into patterns which homogenize reflected photons, distributing their wavelengths equally throughout the visual spectrum. Effectively, over approximately six cumulative seconds of exposure, affected surfaces lose all color, retaining shades of gray of the same luminosity as the original surface. Reflective surfaces remain unaffected, but appear to stop SCP-316's light rather than reflecting it. SCP-316 has a temporary but more drastic effect on living or sentient organisms. Its effect is spread evenly across an organism even internally, as long as part of the organism is exposed to its light. Effects set in over approximately 27 cumulative seconds of exposure and gradually wear off over the next 24 hours. In addition to loss of color, most affected organisms experience the following. Color blindness, lower body temperature, low energy, slowed movements, monotonic slurred speech, inattentiveness, short-term memory loss, apathy, lack of aggression, negligible emotional response, passive cooperation with instructions, relative lack of desire to lie or deceive, limited capacity for foresight or creative thought. After recovering from the effects of SCP-316, most subjects report symptoms of nausea and depression for up to one week. Almost all subjects, once recovered, volunteer their displeasure at having been exposed to SCP-316 and may violently resist further exposure. Cross-experimentation between SCP-316 and uncooperative living SCPs for the purposes of pacification has been approved. Addendum 316A SCP-316 was recovered from the residence of a colorblind man arrested for counterfeiting in Texas. The man had reportedly attempted to pay for items at a convenience store with colorless bills. A Secret Service investigator noted the apparent quality and validity of the bills, as well as the ink's chemical equivalency with Federal Ink, and the Foundation investigated. The subject's house was mostly colorless as it seemed he had been using SCP-316 to navigate at night. Neighbors reported the subject to have been withdrawn and depressingly dull. Subject was terminated and his property destroyed. Addendum 316B Experiment Log of Dr. Blast Testing SCP-316 on Sentient SCPs Date Undisclosed Exposure to Aggressive Humanoid SCPs Experiment 1 Exposure to SCP-213 Full effects of SCP-316 confirmed after 25 seconds of exposure. SCP-213 exhibits normal symptoms of exposure. Subject is still able to disintegrate matter when ordered to do so, but to a diminished extent, approximately 9% normal speed. 
testing concluded. After recovery, subject shows a willingness to comply with Foundation commands to avoid future exposure to SCP-316. Note, my heart nearly jumped out when he started melting matter, but scares aside, this test has proven very useful. We can use SCP-316 to ensure cooperation when these SCPs disagree with us, and then hold it over their heads like a whip when they think of doing it again. Dr. Blast Experiment 2 Exposure to SCP-076-2 Abel Full effects of SCP-316 confirmed after 30 seconds of exposure. SCP-076-2 enters a catatonic stupor, still upright. At 49 seconds, subject proceeds to dispassionately kill all nearby personnel. Kill switch activated remotely by Dr. Blast. Assistants to Dr. Blast note him hammering kill switch frantically for up to 16 seconds after SCP-076-2 was pacified. Testing suspended. After revival, when questioned, SCP-076-2 remarked that SCP-316 had made him feel extremely bored. What else was I supposed to do? Note, Jesus, I guess monsters don't react the same way to this thing. It's a good thing I opted to stay in Site-17 during the procedure. Dr. Blast Note, Dr. Blast will be supervising all further SCP-316 testing remotely, as with the previous procedure. Data expunged. Experiment 5. Exposure to SCP-56. Full effects of SCP-316 confirmed after 30 seconds of exposure. SCP-56 changes into a gray replica of one of the researchers in the testing room shifting between several of them as tests are conducted. Personality and effects of subject remain unchanged. Only the physical form appears to be affected. As researchers read out results for Dr. Blast, viewing remotely via camera, SCP-56 takes the form of Dr. Blast. Microphone in Dr. Blast's area records him shouting an expletive and falling over with his chair. Testing concluded. Note. Nobody told me this thing could breach camera transmissions. I've probably been mentally breached as well. I can feel it already, damn it. My head's probably going to explode. This thing can destroy brains, right? Who the hell designed 56's containment procedures anyway? Damn it. I can't move. I can't f***ing move. Wheel me down to the infirmary. Hurry! Dr. Blast. Note. Medical personnel found no physical or mental problems with Dr. Blast. Research assistant has requested a transfer. Data expunged. Experiment 8. Exposure to SCP-343. Data expunged and riots in Italy, which data expunged. Effects of in Site 17. Dr. Blast informed of results after regaining consciousness. Further testing attempts suspended. Note. As we informed you the sixth time, Dr. Blast, under no conditions are we approving your emergency transfer requests. O5 Note. What the fuck is he doing with a safe classification? Tell O5 I'm not supervising tests on anything outside of my security clearance again, damn it. Dr. Blast. Experiment 9. Exposure to SCP-6621. Mr. Deeds. Full effects of SCP-316 confirmed after 28 seconds of exposure, to which the subject exhibits normal symptoms. Subject is asked to explain his origin and other previously unobtainable information. Subject remains silent and unresponsive. Administering researcher asks subject to obtain a glass of lemonade, to which he responds that he is tired and would rather not. Researcher insists. Subject leaves in the expected manner and returns with a glass on a tray, which is empty, save for three cubes of ice and a wedge of lemon. Upon questioning, subject responds that he was thirsty. When dismissed and summoned again with SCP-662, subject returns free of symptoms and immediately apologizes to researcher for his unprofessional conduct. When asked about the effects of exposure to SCP-316, Subject replied that they were 
Unpleasant. Testing concluded. Note. Cheeky bastard. Dr. Blast. Awaiting declassification. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-315, The Recorded Man, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.